What's up? Hi. Where the hell have you been, Loka? <laughs> I haven't made a video in a while because I moved, I was very busy, I went through a little bit of depression episode, but I'm back. Well, I've been working on an orange shirt day themed skirt because orange shirt day is coming up on September 30th. If you don't know what orange shirt day is it's it's on september 30th every year it's a holiday in canada it wasn't a recognized holiday until this year september 30th 2021 is the first time it's being recognized as a statutory holiday in canada and it's being called national truth and reconciliation day not orange shirt day. Before this year, it's always been orange shirt day and people always wore orange shirts on September 30th to bring awareness on residential schools. I'll explain a little bit what residential schools is. Okay, residential schools were schools, well, they were institutions where indigenous children were sent when they turned six years old and sometimes younger and these institutions were very bad places and they were treated very poorly they were they were basically like concentration camps where they had their culture violently taken from them these schools happened in recent history it's not something that happened like hundreds of years ago 200 years ago the last school was closed in 1996 which was one year before i was born like my grandparents attended residential school people who are still alive attended these schools and the people who did the abusing they're still alive as well they're probably like 80 90 years old but they still need to be put in jail. They were very bad places. Almost every indigenous person, no, not almost, every indigenous person has a family member who has attended one of these schools. Every single indigenous person knows someone who attended residential school and had to endure those horrible, abusive environments. So yeah, that's, what orange shirt day is for just to bring awareness to that because residential schools has been swept under the rug in canada for a very long time all throughout history growing up when i was in school when i was like in elementary school junior high whatever i never ever learned about residential schools like in a formal education institution i've never heard residential schools be mentioned and maybe things are changing now which is good but that's a problem when something that canada was built on has been hidden so good that barely anyone knows about it. There's not a lot of awareness. There was 215 children found at the Kamloops Indian Residential School in British Columbia. They were found in May and that really opened a lot of people's eyes to residential schools and what they really were and like I think it's the Truth and Reconciliation Report. It's believed that I think 3,500 children died in these schools. That's what it said in the report. After Kamloops, they started searching more schools and I believe that the number now is around 6,000. By the time I post this video, it'll probably be higher. But it's around 6,000 now, which is like double what they had down in the Truth and Reconciliation report. And it's really sad because that report came out like a few years ago. The most common thing that the survivors remember was that children were dying in these schools and no one really believed them. Now that they're finding mass graves, everyone finally believes what Every, what the native people have been saying this whole time residential schools is really sad it's a really sad topic and i don't like talking about it but it's important to talk about it because it happened and a lot of things have happened since then 
to the generations that came after residential schools and a lot of things have happened as a result of residential schools within indigenous communities there's a lot of intergenerational trauma because of these schools and loss of culture and language and that's important to talk about it's important to talk about these things that we lost so that we can try and get them back because it's important to get these things back thank you thank you for listening to my little talk on residential schools i'm making a skirt for orange shirt day i made a skirt before i made it when the 215 children were found at kamloops and i did a video on it oh my god before i start any of this like my first my first ribbon skirt video i didn't know a lot about making ribbon skirts like i just started and i've learned a lot since then i'm here to spread my knowledge this is the skirt that i'm gonna be doing on my last video i made on ribbon skirts like the how to make a ribbon skirt video i didn't know how to do like okay this is not the best stitching sorry i didn't know how to do the zigzag stitch so i guess i'll be showing you the zigzag stitch on this skirt I'm gonna be showing y'all how to sew these ribbons on. These ones are just pinned down, they're not sewn on yet. So I'll be showing you guys how to do the zigzag. And I'm gonna be doing applique on this skirt. I'm gonna be drying it. And then I'm gonna like iron it onto this. I'm so excited. And this is what I'm gonna be drying. Let me explain my drying, okay? I've been putting a lot of thought into like what I want to do for the skirt since like it kind of has like an orange fall theme. The colors. It's an orange skirt day shirt. <laughs> an orange skirt day shirt. <laughs> an orange shirt day skirt. So I was like, I'm gonna make this an orange shirt day skirt. I'm gonna do a very good job and I wanna put a lot of thought into it because this day is important to me so i decided that i wanted flowers i'm gonna try to draw them a little bit better i got the inspiration from this picture i seen on instagram these flowers i'm trying to kind of make it on here i'm gonna draw them myself i was thinking what am i gonna put on the skirt I wanted to have like some kind of meaning to me, something that has to do with my interpretation on Orange Shirt Day. The, this one I made, it kind of had a meaning to it, but like I already knew right away what I wanted to put on this skirt. I wanted it to be like hands, like the hands of the creator, and then the ribbons, they represent the spirit world, I guess, setting free the children the 215 children which are the butterflies so that's what this skirt meant to me i wanted like this other skirt that i'm making to have meaning i don't know i just thought about how they took our culture and that's always been like something that's hurt me deeply that i grew up not knowing my culture i know some cree i did powwow when I was little so I do know some aspects of my culture but for the most part I didn't know like ceremony I guess when I was growing up I just didn't feel indigenous I don't know if that makes sense but like I didn't feel attached to my indigenous roots it's aside from like powwowing when I was a little kid I didn't feel indigenous I grew up going to church my family is Christian, but I wanted more than that. I wanted to feel as if I was connected with my culture and like I didn't feel like that my whole life because I was always going to church. Like it just didn't make me feel whole. Just kidding, I don't know, but like really that's kind of how it felt. Like I didn't feel like whole as an indigenous person, like something was missing. Anyways, yeah. 
my culture. I never really felt connected to it until I went to university and I learned how to make a ribbon skirt. And like for once, I was like, wow, this is what indigenous people do. When I started making ribbon skirts, I just felt a little bit more connected to my culture. I was like, you know what? This is something, part of my culture that makes me feel like I'm connected as an indigenous person. Yeah, that's what this design is supposed to be. The generations before me, my my mom and my grandparents, they don't make ribbon skirts, they don't make powwow regalia, they don't go to ceremony or nothing like that. And that's fine. Like they didn't teach me any of that because they didn't know themselves. So they're not like tradish at all and that's a result of residential school. It used to make me so angry that I grew up not knowing my culture because of these schools and I used to cry about it, but I'm coming to terms with it. I've, I'm kind of coming to terms with everything, you know, like intergenerational trauma and all that. It's painful, but you know, try to work through it. So this is supposed to be me. And this is a ribbon skirt because like I said, I felt like I found my culture through making ribbon skirts. So that's me with my ribbon skirt. And then this is gonna be the sun. This is the first draft. It's gonna look better and probably bigger. These children here are supposed to represent the my generations before me. Like I said, my grandparents went to residential school. It's just supposed to be symbolic. This is supposed to be my grandmother in her little residential school outfit. And then this is supposed to be my grandfather in his residential school outfit. And it's, these two children are supposed to like symbolize my grandparents' generation who attended residential schools. This person who's supposed to be me, this represents my generation and like people my age who are trying to take back their culture and their language, trying to like make it easier for the next generation to have their culture. And this one is leading them forward into taking back the culture and taking back the language, bringing awareness to residential schools and what Canada has done to our people. Well, that's what this person is supposed to be doing, leading them forward. That was a long talk about the skirt I'm making because this skirt, it has meaning to me and I just have to talk about it. I guess I guess we'll start sewing down the ribbons now. Let's go. Let's go to the sewing corner. I'm gonna start sewing the ribbons onto the skirt and it's gonna be the zigzag stitch. I'm gonna zoom in so that you can see what I'm doing. The skirt is gonna be two panels and then I'm gonna sew them together on each side. I'll zoom in on how I'm gonna do the stitching. There's a lot of ribbons on this one, so it's gonna take a while. I'm gonna be going very slowly. You just wanna go slowly so you can make sure that it's going on and off off of the ribbon and then on to the ribbon and you want to try and make it like as straight as you can try to keep the ribbons lining up while you're sewing it on I, I finished, I finally finished, I finished sewing this. It's very straight and it's very clean. I want to put like something like this onto the front of my skirt. I'm gonna figure out like the size of everything, where I want it to be, I'm gonna map it out. I'm gonna draw it on a piece of paper, all these 
things. I'm gonna draw them bigger. I'm just gonna put them on the skirt and see how I want everything. You know, I gotta get everything set up. I gotta get, I'm gonna put the skirt on the floor so I can just map it out and everything. This is my first time drawing my own design. I'm gonna start drawing the different pieces of this in the color I want and then I'm gonna put it on my skirt and we're just gonna see how it looks so yeah I feel like when I sit here I look very smart like okay, I'm also gonna need a scissors there. next I'll draw this person who's supposed to be me finished the design I'm gonna be tracing these onto heat bar and fabric I don't know I guess I'll start tracing these onto fabric I did these, finished the, this person who's supposed to be representing me in my generation, and then I finished this one. I did these two, and I didn't do the little boy, so I can show you what I did. I cut all the pieces. I cut the shirt and the pants. Now I just have to do the little boy. What you want to do is... Take each little piece and then trace it onto the heat bond. I'm just gonna draw it this way because the design is gonna be this way. This is how it's gonna stick onto the heat bond. Like the design is gonna be facing this way and then that's the way it's gonna be ironed on. So like when you flip it around, it has to be this way. Hope that makes sense. I'll just trace these guys on. Trace them close together. If you can't, that's fine. I used to trace mine far apart because I found it hard, but I'm a little bit better now. I'm just going to cut it out around. I cut them out. You might need to cut your heat bond like so it's like hidden under the thingy, you know what I mean? I'm just fixing all my pieces of heat bond so that they're like underneath the fabric so they're not showing. I'm just gonna iron these on onto the heat bond. You can't really see them. This, I'm gonna put it onto here. Just wanna iron this on. You just wanna cut this out. It's finished. I finished the three people. These are for the flowers. I'm gonna be putting flowers on the side of people. There's gonna be four of them. I have to trace all of these onto heat bond and then I have to cut them out, iron on the heat bond, and then iron them onto the black fabric. I'm not gonna record myself doing this part, tracing it onto the heat bond, unless I will show them when I'm done because that's gonna take forever. Be back when I'm done. I'm gonna be sewing around the pieces just so that they stay down when I wash the skirt.
just be patient cause Messaging lies like I won't find out. You know that I'ma find out. Oh no. Searching for perfection, your reflection you won't find. Your fluorescent in design, sexy and divine. Find out. Yeah, yeah, you know that I'ma find. You gon' find out. I think I did a really good job. It took like two weeks because I was working and I had to keep stopping. But it was worth all the work and time that I put into it because um, I think it's really beautiful and I really love what it represents to me. It feels good that I'm able to like express my feelings and like my experience as a indigenous woman. It feels good that I can express myself in a form of art, which is making ribbon skirts. Anyways, yeah, I'm really happy with how this skirt turned out. I hope, I hope this was a good video. Like and subscribe.